having my um, morning Coke Zero because that's my life now. Anyway, um, thanks to anybody that subscribed or liked or whatever. That's cool. That's helpful and stuff. Uh, the last two videos I uploaded are just kind of me rambling about random stuff. <clears throat> but uh, I don't know. if I figure if I'm going to be doing this more often, um, I might as well tackle specific subjects, ideas and stuff. You know, have a little fun, dare I say, with it. I was initially going to just, like, name the videos, like, angst and a number, but that would just get stupid, and then you wouldn't really even know what the subject matters about. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the topic in, and then fucking angst right after it, and I'll just kind of keep that pattern going. That way, if uh, somebody at some point when I make a bunch of these over time decides, hey, I want to hear what this loser thought about um, this or that, or this idea or subject, they can check it out. Not that I foresee that ever happening, but hey, you never know. One never knows much. So today, I'm going to have a story for everyone. It's the story of academia. <laughs> it's the story of a man and that man was me so when this man hit his 20s well entering his 20s he decided academia the ivory tower was a worthwhile thing because Everything else, as a schizoid, everything else seemed so overly um, emotional and confusing half the time. And he thought, hey, what if I enter some academic field that I'm interested in and that I'm uh, good at and climb that ivory tower and then be amongst the intelligentsia, the highbrow individuals of the world that see through a lens different than the common man. So that was my foolish, but uh, that was the man's foolish notion. And uh, foolish naivete that pushed him forward. Because everything else in his life seemed confusing, chaotic. It didn't make sense. His relationships, his uh, direction, his family. Nothing really made too much sense when he hit 20. And he decided that those things sound important. So... He then went ahead and did nothing for the next five years. <laughs> five or six or something. And then eventually decided he would do something. So he went to college. And before he decided never to go because he thought it's all bullshit. It doesn't matter. It won't change anything. So on and so forth. Your usual edgelord kind of doomer crap. Nothing wrong with being a doomer, though. I'm still, I'm still kind of a fucking doomer right now, but that kind of shit. So, at some point or another, he thought, there, this is the way out of all this. This is, this is something to aspire to. This is something to hold up with, with pride, purpose, and meaning. So, he went to college. And he went to community college, initially. And, of course, that was just, like, a vapid useless collection of classes that accomplished little to nothing and um, he thought oh well this is community college this is different once I get through this then I'll transfer to a real university and then then I'll find he said 
the true academics, the ones that don't get guided by their feelings, that move forward based on science and logic and reason, things of that nature. And so he continued on his quest and he completed all his courses and he entered the university. Once in the university, he started to continue his undergrad classes and he began to take courses associated to his interests, his interest being history. History because, well, when he initially entered it, he believed could be somehow objectively looked at and studied and interpreted and narrated. What a fool he was to believe such things. And so he took his undergrad classes and he did exceptionally well. But of course he didn't care about any praise or any grades that looked good. He didn't really care about any rewards or anything of the such associated to his grades or his ability to write at a um, decent level but he honed his skills he did his research he followed the rules because he thought there was something to attain something other than the emotional wasteland that is most of the world around him so he trudged forward and uh, along the way he discovered some things he didn't want to discover which was that most of these professors are just as fucking stupid as anybody else With the same kind of drawbacks and the same kind of outbursts and the same kind of blind spots and all sorts of things that the average person possesses and uh, the same kind of a per um, perceived to him as irrational behavior that he couldn't seem to get his mind around but nonetheless he thought yes they are like this but they're striving to be more right they're trying to be an objective bunch working together as a collective making up for each other's flaws such foolish delusions that the student had about the world I'm gonna drink a little more coke zero give me a second here here we go clear throat and so he went forward, like I said, and he graduated. Oh my, he wore the cap and the gown. He got his history degree and he thought, hmm, that was just the first step. Now let us continue forward into more debt. So he became a graduate student. And as a graduate student, he studied harder, did more research, got deeper and deeper to the philosophical implications of his craft. And the deeper he delved, the more disappointed he got. Because as he read many of these graduate pieces of literature, he discovered that a lot of these authors that were renowned and well loved and established were just as fucking stupid as some of the professors had been and as fucking stupid as many of the students in the classroom were being and this is not to claim that the man himself was not fucking stupid for he was he was fucking stupid for his own reasons in different ways but he was not 
fucking stupid when it came to the subject at hand, which was history. Its study and its research and its importance. That he was not stupid about. Many other things, yes. But unfortunately, the people around him who proclaimed themselves to be these objective pillars of knowledge were not the case. And the authors who created these books that allowed them, the professors, to make the classes in which they proclaimed such ideas were also not who I believed they were. Sorry, that he believed they were. <laughs> Keep messing that up. And so the story continues and he got his master's degree. And over the course of those three years or so, as he had other preoccupations in his life, so couldn't do it in two, um, he discovered more and more that the politics within the university itself were the only thing that seemed to matter to anyone there. The projects, the research, the things that a lot of these professors were working on came secondary to the politics. And not necessarily because that's what they wanted, but that's how it was all set up. The tenured professors of the university were deep into the politics, deep into the smoozing, to the events, deep into whatever it would take to gain that higher position, that academic renown, that publishing of an article in a well-known journal. And not for the reasons of advancing their field, but for the reasons of gaining influence and power. And the same shit everyone else seems to strive for when ambition hits them. It was not about history. It was not about pushing forward the human experience in a rational way. To understand the past, to understand its importance, its interpretations, the eventual ramifications of those interpretations. No, no, it was all politics. And the few, the few professors that I, uh, let's just stop that silly story thing. Uh, me, it's me. <laughs> uh, the few people that I met that were truly the type of academics that I perceived would um, be at the top, be, uh, be the tenured ones, the established ones, and their specializations. The few that um, were studious and about the research, about learning, were all either associate professors, so it's pretty much part-time professors. They didn't have the political ambition to climb because they weren't interested in that. And because of that, regardless of how many degrees they possessed, because some of them had quite a few, multiple PhDs, regardless of how well and revolutionary almost some of the research was it didn't matter they got paid shit they had to work on a year to year basis they were not tenured and some of the dumbest motherfucking professors I've ever met were the ones that were tenured it's the most emotionally driven 
politically driven ideologically driven piece of shit professors were the ones that were tenured the ones that got the high accolades within the academic community it's fucking depressing and the deeper I went into talking with these professors because I would stay after class and discuss things with them and I uh, want to theorize on various things and look at avenues of research that are, haven't been touched things like that um, the only ones that were ever interested in the actual topics were those professors they did not have the renown they did not have the pay they did not have the respect that they deserved even though they were the most disciplined of the bunch and and and, and i'm not just talking like oh high and mighty um hi bro academics are no they were grounded people with varying views but willing to discuss their field and weren't interested in expanding themselves on LinkedIn or any of that stupid bullshit or kissing ass to the administrators and the, you know the stockholders essentially of the university and the ones that were tenured never wanted to talk. They were never interested in anything outside of the box. They were never interested in anything even remotely controversial. Anything that could be possibly interpreted as a non, non-establishment, non-current paradigm. All that was out the door, uninteresting, cynical. Oftentimes I heard that word a lot. Cynical, that's so cynical. That's so that's so negative. It's a negative outlook. That's a cynical outlook on uh, this or that. It wasn't being cynical. It was being real. It was being a realist when it came to a lot of things. Pragmatist. They didn't want to listen to that. No. no. They wanted their ideological driven nonsense to drivel. <sighs> and I didn't argue with them. I just tried to reason with them. Whenever I tried to reason with some of them, well, I had a few instances in which they lashed out at me or literally grew angry because I was questioning their uh, established framework of how it is that specific events occurred or the motivations behind certain events or of certain books or theories and ideas and misunderstandings about specific individuals in history and new information that comes out that contradicts old information things like that you know all that just seemed to be a problem most of the time certain subject matters were not academic or were not considered serious by people in their field because that's essentially it was it, it, it felt no different than um, a social media hashtag trend type thing where if it's not trending it's not interesting so whatever's trending in uh, academia and whatever field you're in, that's what that's what you need to be studying if you want to climb. You need to be studying whatever's trending and whatever goes with the flow of the trending ideology regarding your field. If you're not doing that, you're not climbing. You're not making money. You're not making a good living. You're not going to be able to support your family in any significant way, especially considering that you're going to have a ton of debt. So I any notion of that, that's out the fucking door. That's gone. So just just know that. Just know that. If you're interested in real research, real study, real questioning, of, of established narrative. You might as well just do that as a hobby. Don't get a degree. Unless you're getting a degree in something that's non-academic. I mean, not like something like that's not 
for the purposes of teaching or, or being associated necessarily with the university. If it's something practical, like an engineering degree or or um, some kind of uh, business related stuff and things like that, that's fine. Go for it. Even that, even even in those fields though, oh, especially finance and economic field, there's there's all kinds of shit you can't question. Even in those, uh, at least within the university, once you expand outside of it, you go into the private sector, then you're good. But unfortunately, I chose a subject matter that doesn't really have much of a private sector, and uh, most liberal arts do not have private sectors. Um, and unfortunately, now because of you know the many fucking nonsense liberal arts that exist, um, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of people who see liberal arts and just assume all sorts of horrible shit. Because, of course, blah 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 studies is now in the same fucking category as a history degree. So that's fucking great. Completely different fucking field, but completely different discipline as well. Well, what the fuck does that matter, right? What are the practical implications about of, of knowing anything about the past? Or what, what can you possibly learn from uh, information of past events? Nothing, apparently. Let me give you a, an example of something I guess I had to deal with at the uh, university. So... A lot of the subject I was interested in um, have always been kind of niche. Um, always been interested in uh, intelligence agencies, uh, CIA, Mossad, you know, NSA kind of stuff. Um, hell, if you want to go Cold War, you know, KGB. But uh, anything of that type, especially Cold War era stuff, was always very, very, very interesting to me. And it's always what I wanted to read about and study and research and write about. Because I have a high interest in propaganda and uh, social engineering, and things of that nature. And it's stuff that really happens all the time. This very second, it's happening. And, um, and there was a lot of history there, and there was a lot uh, to learn. And I have this issue with... Uh, a lot of that history because it's so strange highly abnormal especially when you get into the experimental stuff that uh, a lot of these intelligence agencies took part in um, psychological warfare and things like that some some of the stuff's real spooky real scary to most people and I don't know if it's that or what but I always had this I always found it unsettling that any history regarding that would always be subject to, um, what was it, be like almost like pop history or it wouldn't be under the history category, it would go under like conspiracy theory and shit like that. And, and, and it always sounded insane to me because some so much of this stuff is documented, so much of the stuff is archived. So much of the stuff, it's it's real. It's not a theory. It's not an idea. It's, it's it happened, it's, and, and there's evidence of it happening, and it doesn't seem to matter. Like the classic example would be like MK Ultra. Right? There's just piles and piles of MK Ultra related pa paperwork, Project Bluebird, uh, Mockingbird, all that kind of stuff. It's just piles of primary resources or primary sources associated to those projects and it still is treated as a weird taboo type subject within the history community and it's confusing to me especially since um a lot of this stuff infiltrated and i'm guessing this is partially why a lot of this stuff infiltrated the academic community especially in the 70s the 80s CIA a lot of these intelligence agencies infiltrated these universities you know seeking out communists and things like that but they still they're still involved they still 
take part in uh, the ma manipulation and control of uh, what is trending essentially in history what is popular what is not touched so on and so forth they're still involved but nobody wanted to, to hear about this or talk about it um, except for like I said those professors that had nothing they didn't have the tenure they didn't have the safety of their job they didn't have the pay they didn't have the the grants all the professors that had those things none of them were interested in those subjects none of them they wouldn't even broach the subject it would be either dismissed or scoffed at and um, many times when I would try to you know if I was in a specific class you know, I knew that there was a, something interesting in that part of the world that um, I could integrate into a research paper they would require me to write or you know a presentation or something it would it would just be a fucking struggle just to get them to listen and then finally when I would present enough primary sources they'd be like oh okay well I guess this there's there is something to this I guess so go ahead but god they would scrutinize it and they would scrutinize it not in a regular way like anybody else's project it would just be because it's that subject matter and I was really interested in how that subject matter and intelligence agencies affected academia and I also did some research on how journals work and how journals print specific articles and how even the intelligence agencies fucked with um, a lot of those big publications and stuff like that so that stuff had negative political implications within the academic community and so because of that they weren't interested or they thought oh that's that's so cynical for you to believe that about the history community or any academic community <laughs> that that we're all a bunch of fucking frauds yeah well you are so that's great and so um you know now i'm enjoying the covid life with uh absolutely no interest in wanting to teach absolutely no interest in wanting to climb that ivory tower any further got my master's degree i was gonna go for a phd one day but nope fuck that i don't want to be one of them I do not want to be one of them. And I also don't want to be in any more debt just to be scoffed at or um, ignored. And end up like those other poor professors with their associate professor positions where they get year-to-year -year contracts. <laughs> you believe that shit? Year-to-year -year contracts. Some of them have to work at like two or three different universities part time just to make ends meet that's fucking ridiculous and like I said these are the professors that actually cared about their discipline in their field in a very unpartisan very highly objective way and they have to work at two or three universities part time to make enough money and still they, they continue their work their research and so forth <sighs> fucking makes me so goddamn mad so yeah anyway so I end up very disillusioned by it all and as someone like I said this is schizoid angst right so it ties in as well because that was one of the few things that kind of drove me forward because uh, as, as, as pretty established us schizoids don't exactly feel too much joy about mostly anything mostly indifference and that was the one thing that I thought oh maybe that could bring me some sense of accomplishment some sense of purpose and it's gone.
it's gone. And it took many years of hard work for me to discover that it's all bullshit. So you can imagine how discouraging that can be. I'm still very interested in the subject, but I hate academia. I hate what it represents. No, uh, I loved what it represented. I hate what it is. And what it's become, especially now. It's gotten worse. It's becoming blatantly what I saw it was a few years back. And... It's hard to move forward when what gave you purpose is just gone. It's just fucking eviscerated right in front of you. Guts pulled out. And you're trying to shove those fucking intestines back in. But nope. No, they're getting pulled out. Chewed up. So yeah, just the big, I guess, lesson here is if you're into a liberal art... Don't, don't. They just don't. Don't study it. Do it as an interesting hobby or something maybe you want to do on, say, like this, like a YouTube thing, or you want to write some articles or something. Fine. Do something like that. Do some kind of private sector stuff with that knowledge. But do not bother getting a fucking master's degree or PhD. Unless you're just a fucking ladder climber. If you're a ladder climber that happens to like that stuff, go for it. Go be the piece of shit you want to be. But, unless you're that kind of ladder climber, it doesn't give a fuck what you have to do to get up there. I don't suggest it. I do not suggest it. If you're getting into something practical, something real world that'll be really good for the private sector, then yeah, go for it. Do it. Get whatever piece of paper you need to get to get that good job. I wish I had done it at this point. Now I'm just in a mountain of debt. For what? Literally, all I purchased was disappointment and disillusion. Super cool, right? So if you came to this channel to hear something inspirational, you're probably not going to get it. <laughs> that's, not, that's not what this is for. This is for, I guess, if any of you feel just as discouraged, just know you're not alone. Especially those with some kind of fucking mental illness, personality disorder, action like myself. Uh, you're not alone. Unless you want to be alone, because I usually want to be alone. But parasocially, parasocially, you don't have to be alone. You got me here to be miserable for you, too. So anyway, that's it. That's the story of how academia fucked me in the ass. Oh, um, I guess I might as well start out. Okay, so, um, Schadenfreude, you left a comment at the bottom. Don't worry, man, just post comments, dude. Seriously, just fucking do it. It'll give me ideas, probably, for different stuff. If you know peeps that want to fucking listen to this type of bullshit, tell them to. Um, so, anybody else that's listening, comment. It's useful to me. You can just talk shit, I don't care. Tell me I'm a fucking retard. I don't, I don't give a shit. That's fine. Um, it, I'll probably just get a laugh out of it or something. Uh, call me a doomer. Call me a fucking whatever. Tell me to go lift, bro. Get over it. <laughs> something like that. Um, but yeah, like button thing. Because I guess it helps with kind of making the channel grow a little bit. And um, subscribe or whatever. I don't know. Whatever it is that people fucking do for this stupid shit do do that uh thanks for listening try to stay alive out there